Hello and welcome to the SciFest Movie Talk episode. So in this episode I'm discussing the classic 1978 independent horror slasher Halloween as directed by one of the true original masters of horror, John Carpenter. Now uh, Halloween is an iconic movie in itself but it is also one which spawned for better or for worse uh, a franchise that uh, now has produced 13 Movies in total, I think, um, at least at the time of this review, um, and numerous other projects from literature, comics, and even a video game originally developed for the likes of the Atari 2600. The influence this movie has had not only on its own franchise, but also in horror in general, is simply nothing short of phenomenal. A true masterclass in suspense, redefining at the time and for decades to come just what we would come to expect from a Hollywood slasher movie. Twinned with its impact in popular culture and again, for better or for worse, its template which has now been revisited in hundreds uh, of occasions. Each with varying levels of success, uh, but with only one, um, well, only a select few shall we say, managing to even come close to recreating the macabre sense of power this movie holds over its audience. Its own sequels and reboots included. The movie sees us introduced to its antagonist, Michael Myers, as played by Nick Castle, a young boy who murdered his older sister in cold blood on Halloween 1963. Following this, Michael had been incinerated, it tried to, in, in, many times, but incarcerated in a maximum security sanatorium under the watchful eye of Dr. Sam Loomis, as played by Donald Pleasance, who has spent years trying to keep Michael locked away, knowing the evil that resided inside, and the hell that would ensue if he ever broke loose. Well, needless to say, the inevitable happens, and... After 15 years, Michael breaks free and heads back to his hometown of Haddonfield, where he proceeds to stalk a group of high school teens looking to have a good time on Halloween night, taking a particular interest in one specific conscientious teen, Laurie Strode, as played by Jamie Lee Curtis, who he proceeds to follow around town as he lurks within the shadows. As All Hallows' Eve falls on their sleepy little area of suburbia, Laurie and her friends know nothing of the terror that awaits as Michael starts to escalate into a murderous rampage that will surely rock the town of Haddonfield once again, with Michael's attentions squarely fixated on our unsuspecting teens, proving most certainly that this was to be the Night of the Boogeyman. So, Halloween, uh, what an absolutely outstanding entry into the slasher genre that uh, at the time of its release brought horror right smack bang into mainstream focus, making household names out of its scream queen, Jamie Lee Curtis, and indeed, indeed, its villain, Michael Myers, who are both instantly recognisable and synonymous with this franchise, even if they both do not exactly feature in every movie in the series yet to come. The horror of this movie doesn't necessarily come from the gore. In actual fact, this is kept to a minimum, but plays into our fears more from the unyielding way that it attunes into our senses, utilising extremely clever and immersive cinematography to really build an electrically charged atmosphere around its characters, especially Laurie that kind of slowly builds this tension and suspense until it simply can't hold it on no more. And that release is terrifying, uh, and terrifyingly succinct indeed, and relentless to a point. We get a uniquely disturbing vantage point for quite a lot of the movie. That is, through the eyes of Michael himself, or at least over his shoulder, we as the audience become the stalker, which provides for a very intimately terrifying experience, forcing us to ask questions about ourselves and our frame of mind that certainly leaves you with a kind of queasy, uneasy feeling. The opening credits themselves are disturbing enough, totally simplistic yet devilish at the same time. Just a pumpkin on screen getting ever so slightly bigger against the menacing beats of Carpenter's haunting music. 
Toe tapping as it might be, it still sets a very tense moment into which we open the movie. Already our fear levels are heightened and that's before we even get to witness firsthand the evil that resides within Michael. The music throughout, um, all composed by Carpenter himself, delivers a very cleverly repeating theme that's prominently used throughout the movie to multiply the tension and enhance the delivery of the mu movie's visuals. Nothing much more than a couple of chords, but certainly instantly recognisable as Carpenter's work, and wonderfully chilling in its own right. Going a long way in, in aiding to build this kind of crescendo that the film has an effortless fear factor. The idea of the movie overall is ingenious, simplicity in itself. The film is totally no thrills. Plenty of thrills, don't get me wrong, but it is cut to the bare bones. No gimmicks, no tricks. Just a man in a mask terrorising a neighbourhood. But with all of this, the movie is not bland by any stretch of the imagination. We do get to savour the characters, especially Laurie and Michael, on which most of the film does kind of revolve. The build-up of suspense and the crystal clear and focused cinematography just kind of helps to home this in. Michael as a villain is, is beyond imposing. The concept of a man, a force if you will, that cannot be reckoned with, has no motive, no reasoning, yet is yet... It's a terrifying concept, isn't it, to kind of, that the film kind of delivers. There is no chant or magical formula that will save you from his clutches. No backstory that will help piece his history together. He just is, and, and is simply a relentlessly menacing presence from the very beginning. And that's another odd, but kind of interesting tact that the film works in from the very beginning. We know who the killer is, uh, and are made to kind of fear him from the get-go, especially, especially by his doctor, Loomis. Um, he's about as terrifying as Michael is at times. He really does kind of set the scene for Michael as somebody who should be feared and continually drums that into us as the film goes on, just in case, you know, we haven't already got the gist. But then this is all kind of builds into the anticipation for the more macabre events that then transpire as the movie progresses and Michael's escalation and boldness increases. Just watching Loomis turns me into a nervous wreck, you know? I'm jittering already. Um, it, it's a movie that embodies Halloween itself. A dark, brooding piece of cinema that's just totally nerve-wrackingly sadistic in the way that it can kind of get right under your skin. That it takes an, well, kind of, yeah, ordinary slice of suburban life, if you like, in a quiet suburb and completely turns it on its head. That Michael is teasing us and toying with us like a cat with a mouse. Overall, this movie showcases suspense horror at its finest, bringing us a fun and enticingly macabre film to watch any time of the year, not just on Halloween. Um, I hope not, anyway, I hope there's not an urban legend wrapped around that somewhere. But yeah, it, it, watch it any time, but Halloween especially, yeah. It's a thrill, isn't it? It's a thrill to watch. I mean, it's a staple must-see around that time of the year, without without any doubt. The way we travel with the camera in, in is an extremely kind of intimate way to put us directly into the terror, and often from the perspective of Michael himself, which certainly gives the viewer a very creepy and often cringy experience. Definitely unsettling, and indeed filled with paranoia. This is, when all said and done, an absolute masterpiece of horror, and is probably one of the most referenced horror movies in popular culture to date. Certainly one of the most recognisable, and one that has had probably some of the biggest influence on modern horror, with many people and many other movies paying homage to its directorial style, execution and suspense. Even from some of the biggest names in the genre themselves, which simply is respect in itself. And if all that wasn't enough, we're treated to a glimpse of what is yet to come from Carpenter, with Laurie settling in with Tommy, who is she is babysitting on Halloween night to watch a horror movie marathon, if you like, on TV. Uh, and what are they showing? None other than the original 1951 version of The Thing. Uh, well, that and The Forbidden Planet, but as far as I'm aware, uh, Carpenter hasn't actually remade that one yet. 
So, that brings me to the end of this episode. Many thanks for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like. Please do hit that subscribe button for more movie reviews, trailer reactions, and other movie-related content. Absolutely loved having you at Sarfest Movie Talk, and definitely love to have you back. Most of all, just thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.